Hello, this is Russ Fellows from Evaluator Group here at VMworld with Chuck Dubuque, who's VP of Marketing for Tintry. So he's got some updates that he wants to talk about that they just recently announced. Uh, Chuck, you want to tell us about it? Um, so yeah, we, uh, we've recently announced some enhancements to our software um, for the Tintry Enterprise Cloud Platform. Um, the first is a what we're calling the Tintry Cloud Connector. It allows us to extend our data protection story um, up into either Amazon S3 or Am uh, IBM Cloud Object Storage. So um, in one holistic view, we allow our customers to manage their local array-based snaps, their replication from Tintree Array to Tintree Array, and then add in a, another layer of protection uh, up to the cloud, or if they have CleverSafe, which is now IBM Cloud Object Storage on-premises, they can also use that. Um, so re recovering from any snapshot to any Tintree Array, uh, super fast, super easy. We also do a lot to make sure that the data is very compressed, so especially with uh, Amazon and S3, you pay dollars per gig to send data up, to right. store the data, and then bring that data down. Right. So we can reduce, you know, two to five X the amount of data that has to be moved and stored um, to give you the same flexibility for, for recovery. Great. So that's, that's the first thing. Okay. Um, second is compute analytics. So Tintry has always done uh, robust storage analytics on a per VM basis. Uh, we do that on-prem, uh, behind a firewall for a lot of our customers who don't send us cloud data. But last year we introduced predictive analytics uh, where we take auto support data up to three years of, of real data from every customer to allow them to look 18 months into the future as to what their storage requirements might be uh, for both their normal growth as well as for special projects that they might be considering. Right. We're going to extend that um, with, store, uh, with compute analytics um, to allow them to do that same kind of analysis for not just what additional storage they may need to buy for their new projects, but how many CPUs, how much memory um, they might need to buy as well. So um, predictive planning for both compute and for storage. Uh, the historical data that they have, if you haven't seen it, is very good. So it'll be nice to take that same analytic and project it forward. Yeah, and then the, uh, the final piece of our software puzzle is uh, we've, uh, last year again, we introduced what we call our VM scale-out technology, which allows you to create a pool of Tintree storage, loosely coupled, kind of like VMware does with servers. You, you can add a server to a resource pool. It doesn't have to exactly match what you have. You can mix different, different types of CPU and memory. We can do the same thing with storage now, uh, using storage vMotion to move VMs from one place to the other. Now, the caveat has always been with storage vMotion is it hasn't always been very efficient. It can take a long time. Um, and you can tend to lose some of that efficiency that we do on the array in terms of dedupe and compression and array-based snaps when you move a VM. Right. So with this new update to our uh, VM scale-out technology, we are completely offloading from vSphere and from Hyper-V that storage vMotion or storage live migration. So we can move data 10 times as fast. You don't lose snaps. You don't lose dedupe. You don't lose compression and it takes something that might take an hour or two down to five or ten minutes, which makes it really easy to do during production hours. Right. All right, great. And then, so that's the uh, news here at VMworld.